Hey everyone, this is Jen from Jen's Den, and today, let me see if I could put this on here. Today, I'm going to go over um, the supplies that I use to paint with. And so, if you're going to be following along with me, let me see if I can move this a little bit. If you're going to be following along with me, then I think it would be a good idea if you just um, use some of the same supplies I use. So, um, what are the things that you absolutely need? We're going to start with that. So, something to paint on, of course. I have all different types of things to paint on. One of my favorite is wood. These are little wood panels that you can buy at Blick.com. And on my website, I have um, a link to all of these if you were interested in painting on little wood pieces like this, which are what I call shelf sitters. So. You can get them in different sizes. This is a bigger wood panel. I think this is like a 9 by 12. You can buy them in bulk. These are thinner. These are probably um, half inch wide or three quarters inch wide. Um, I like to get these here in the one and a half inch thick because I want them to be able to stand because a lot of people use those to decorate with seasonally. So um, that's one thing. Another thing is just wood from Home Depot or Lowe's. So this is a piece of, um, I think it's 10 inches wide, and it was like a long eight foot board, and I took it outside and I cut it into little pieces, and I used that to paint on as well. Um, this is stained with a Minwax stain on top of it. That is totally optional. You don't have to do that at all. So that's another option. You can have, uh, it's more of a rustic look, which a lot of people like. And then, of course, you have canvases. I just bought these at um, Hobby Lobby. It's like 10 canvases for $10.99. And if you use your Hobby Lobby 40% off, then you know you can get them even cheaper. These are um, really thin. These are kind of like the, um, they're called Super Value. These are kind of like the, the student grade canvases. So you can get all different levels of canvas just depending on what you want to do with your paintings. These are the cheaper ones. You can also get um, thick canvas. This is a one and a half inch canvas which are professionally finished on the back. You can get these in all different sizes and you can get these on Blick.com as well. I, I buy these um, very often and use those for my paintings. So. That is basically the main things that you can paint on. Oh, and something else. If you're not ready to start painting on um, actual like canvases and wood and all of that kind of stuff, I have a mixed media. Let's see where it is. Here it is. There we go. Okay, so this is another option. This is a mixed media tablet. Um, this is 9 by 12 and it has 60 sheets in it. So you can see that I was practicing making some trees here and um, I was practicing the color wheel which we're going to do a lesson on this by the way. Um, and you can use this to practice things and it works really well. I don't use it a lot because I don't like the um, I don't like the way it moves around so much but it is definitely something to uh, to try to practice on, and it's a lot of fun. They're kind of like cardstock paper, so it's really good to have. All right, so that is what you can use to paint on. Now, also you can use um, you can use windows, uh, all kinds of things like that. Because we use acrylics, most of the stuff that I showed you is what you would use for acrylics. Now, if you want to start painting on um, on um, glass or I don't know about plastic I don't know how that would work but if you wanted to start painting on glass or other things there is a paint that's called multi-surface paint so um, just keep that in mind when you're looking at paints I buy acrylic every once in a while I'll just pick up the multi-surface because I like the color it doesn't really matter whether it's multi-surface or not for um, for the surfaces that I paint on Okay, so the most fun part to me is the paint. What do you use for paint? 
There are all different levels of acrylic paints and there are tons and tons and thousands of different colors. So you can go crazy finding paint. So I'm gonna start with the least expensive. You can get the least expensive paint, which is called Craft Smart, or, um, and I'll show it to you really close up. Um, another one is, oh gosh, Apple Barrel. Apple Barrel is probably your cheapest. This is the Walmart brand. It's very, very watery. So when you put the paint on your canvas that you're painting on, it's very transparent. You can see straight through it. So you're gonna have to put two or three layers of paint to get the, the effect that you want. So you can buy, Craftsmart's the same thing. It's a very thin paint and it's very transparent when you put it on your um, palettes. You can buy that if you wanna work with that. That's completely fine. There are, there's nothing wrong with that at all. My favorite paint, because it's, um, because of the price really, is folk art. I like folk art paint. Um, I usually buy the matte acrylic and um, they have it in, in a, a shot gloss finish as well, but I like the matte finish better. Um, these are really my, probably my favorite paints to buy. And like I said, folk art is also in a multi-surface and this is a satin acrylic paint. I just picked that up. I don't like the gloss finish. Um, it's just my personal opinion. Um, what's another type? Okay, so then we get into the more expensive paints. This is a thick body acrylic. The more expensive your paints are, the thicker they are, and the more you only have to put one coat when you paint with this. And you have to use very, very little paint because it goes so far. So like this is a $20 bottle of paint. Um, sometimes you can find them on sale. I wanna say that Master's Touch at Hobby Lobby was like 50% off everything. You know, sometimes you can find sales like that. So this is probably my favorite paint when I'm painting um, textures. Another one is Liquitex, which is, I think this is a uh, Michaels brand. Um, you can get it on Blick as well. Again, it's a heavy body acrylic. You can buy, this is a Master's Touch, I think. Yes, this is a Master's Touch as well. This is just liquid acrylic. I buy the white and the black in larger containers because I use so much of it. And this is $11.99 for a, a bottle. Um, so it's some. it's a little cheaper so it's a little thinner but I use so much of it it's it's okay I mean it, it doesn't really bother me to use those I do also buy the thick body acrylics in the white and the black for certain situations um, so I, I have some of that on um, in stock now as far as colors the colors that you must buy is white black blue some type of blue yellow and red those are actually you can you can mix any color with those and you can make gray out of black and white you can make brown out of red yellow and blue i mean you you can just you can mix all of that however if you have fun like i do and you see this pretty purple here then you're like oh i want this lavender color because it's too pretty and sometimes i have trouble making that color myself when i try to mix mixing takes practice and i'll show you that i love to mix colors so that's something that we'll work we'll work on um so that's what i wanted to say about paint let me see if i missed anything no okay that's all i wanted to say about paint so what other materials well of course you need something to paint with so here we get into another fun area that i go crazy on and that is paint brushes my favorite paint brushes that i use the most or my round brushes okay so i'm going to show you four different sizes of round brushes and this is what i'm going to call this is a brand new one that i just bought it's a really small like a detail brush and um it is a size 18 18 slash zero 
so it's it's a really skinny brush and then you have what I call a large a medium and a small round brush as well so I'm having a lot of trouble seeing sorry about that this is a number two this is a number eight and I cannot see what number this is I'm gonna guess it's about a number 10 I have one that's a little bigger this is a 14 so um, just depends on what size canvas you're going to be painting on. Most of the canvases that we paint on, we go anywhere from 16 to 20 all the way down to a little 5x5. Five five. So you wouldn't want to use these big round ones on a 5x5, um, five five, but you might want to use it on a 16x20. So just gradually start getting your paint brushes. Um, some other paint brushes that you would probably want to invest in is a medium size flat brush and an even smaller flat brush. I don't use the flat brushes that much. Here's one as well that's a flat brush. You can see um, a fan brush, okay? A fan brush, you only need one, just like a medium size. This is a number, this is a number four. So that's a perfect size fan brush. And that's optional, actually. You don't have to have a fan brush. You can use um, just like a flat brush if you wanted to. It'll work pretty close to the same way. All right, my favorite tools are palette knives. If you only get one palette knife, get this one. Get the one that's kind of like a triangle shape that's about a medium length. And this, I've used this so much I don't have a number on it. I found this on Amazon and it was like $1.99 for the whole thing and it was all five um, palette knives. I use every one of these a lot. Um, that one here I use a lot when I start painting pumpkins in the, uh, in the fall time so just keep that in mind. Yeah, I found this on sale on Amazon, they're all coming out the box. For a dollar ninety nine, so I was like, "Oh, I don't need any palette knives, but hey, I'm gonna buy them because you never know." So, um, yeah, they have all different types of palette knives, and but those are the main ones that I use. So you don't need to go crazy over your palette knives. Um, okay, what next? Let's see. Okay, you need some type of area to put your paint on. I ended up grabbing this at one of the craft stores. It's a plastic. Um, I tried I tried it first, as you can see. I tried it using acrylic and just putting it on here and then go and clean it afterwards. And once your acrylic's dry, it's like, it's crazy hard to get acrylics off once it dries. And um, you can take hot water and you can rub and rub and rub and, and scrape, but it's just not worth it. So, a couple of things that I use here. This is this is like um, wax paper, and I usually tape this on top of here, and then I throw it away afterwards. So you might want to get some type of wax paper. This is um, this is actually my stickers from my shipping labels, and I save them instead of throwing them away, and I use them to um, put my paint on. Something else that I use is uh, plastic. Let's see if I can. Um, this is kind of an expensive way to do this, but I am um, I buy these in bulk because I um, I sell my products. I put them in a bag and, and stuff. But I use these, and I take this and I cover it like that. And so I put my paint on here, and then after I use the paint on this side, I turn it over. Basically, I just need a hard surface. Okay, you don't have to have a palette at all. You could use a paper plate, the like the shiny paper plates or um, a, a paper plate that has a, a shiny finish to it. Don't use something that the paint would absorb into because you're not gonna be able to mix it well. So just make sure that you have something that's kind of shiny to um, mix your paint. Palette knives are great for mixing, so if you don't want to use a palette knife on your paintings, I forgot to put this back on me. There we go. Um, if you don't want to use a palette knife on your paintings 
it's always great to have for every painting because I use it to mix my colors a lot. Um, what else? Some type of water source. So I bought this on Blick. I think it was on Blick I bought this. This is, it has two areas for water. I don't know if you can see that, but one of them is muddy. I have to clean it out. The other one is clean. Um, I always use two sources of water. One is to clean your paint brushes and the other one is to keep your paint moist. And so if I'm gonna dip my paintbrush and mix it in my paint, I want to have clean water to do that. So I always use two sources of water. Uh, you can use um, coffee cups, you can use uh, glass jars, whatever you like to put your water in. It's totally up to you. Just clean your water out every time, um, you know, pretty often. Clean your water out pretty often. Uh, what else? Clothes. Okay, so right now I'm not painting, but I do, as you can tell, these are stained pieces of clothes. I just have old clothes that I wear. I like to wear um, our apron, which is not in here right now, but I have an apron, a Jen's Den art apron that I wear, and then sometimes I just wear um, a button-down white shirt. Also, I'm a very messy painter. You may not be, but um, I get paint all over everything. My hands, my elbows, my <laughs> clothes, my hair. That's why I usually wear my hair up and away because I've had paint in my hair before that took me like three weeks to get out. So <laughs> anyway, um, find, oh, rags, okay? You can use paper towels, you can use baby wipes, you can use whatever you want, but I like to take old t-shirts and cut them up into smaller pieces and then once they get all full of paint, I just throw them away. So that's, I have a whole stash down here that I use for that. Um, a place to paint. Find an area that is just a nice, it could be your dining room table. Um, I am lucky enough to have an extra room in the house in our basement where I actually have my art studio. It's probably about a 10 by 10 room and um, this is just a, this is one of those plastic fold away tables that you buy at Lowe's that I covered with some, um, some old wallpaper that was left in this house actually but you can cover it with um, a bulk of craft paper or anything like that. Um, this here is an easel. It is optional to use an easel. I sit when I do my paintings um, because I have a bad back. Sometimes I stand, which you would need a bigger easel if you do stand. But I like my small easel here. It's just a tabletop easel that I got for um, my birthday one year and I like it a lot. It, it extends for larger paintings. If you needed to have a larger painting, you can um, take the whole thing down and bring it with you. It even has a little drawer on the side, but most of the time I just leave it here. And this is completely optional, but it is something that maybe you might wanna invest in. So this is a tabletop easel. Um, what else? That, the easel is optional. So some of the other optional things that you might need. One of them is glazing, well not glazing, but one of them is a medium. A medium is um, when you're using acrylic paint, if your paint starts to dry out, because acrylic paints dry really fast, if your paint starts to dry out, you can use water, but what water does is if you put a lot of water in your acrylic paint, it the molecules of the paint start to separate because water creates, makes the molecules separate. If you use medium, it keeps the molecules together because it still has the same type of, um, the same type of stuff in the medium, and this is clear. So it still has the same type of stuff in the medium as it does in your paint. So it still keeps your paint together and it doesn't um, thin your paint out. So this is just something that's optional. If you look at a lot of acrylic painters, they use water just as much as some, some acrylic painters use medium. So it's totally up to you. I like to use medium, and um, unfortunately this one is a glazing medium, which means that it's really bright, it's really, um, um, 
like shiny when I use it. So I have to go back and buy some different one because I'm not real big on shiny stuff. Okay, if you buy the cheap paints and your paint is too watery and you need um, to thicken your paint up because you want a little texture. This is, I think I have a, a newer one that you can read better. Let me see. Yes, this is here. This is um, a thickening gel. And it's basically, it's almost like a, like a buttery substance, I guess. You take very little of that and you mix it into your paint. You have to mix it really, really, really well to get it nice and creamy because it, it clumps up at first, but it's really good for thickening your paint. So you can use that. That's optional. Um, what else is optional? Okay, the easel is optional, the medium, and the gesso. So what is gesso? This, I bought this in a, like a really big, um, container because I use gesso is basically a primer for your canvas um, most canvases come already gessoed so you might see that when you're buying canvases but I still put another layer of gesso it's a primer that allows your paint to stick to the canvas even better so it kind of like bonds your um, your paint better to the surface that you're uh, painting on if that makes sense so um, that's optional you don't have to buy the gesso I have painted for the last five years sometimes I use gesso sometimes I don't when I first started painting I didn't even know that gesso existed so um, I painted a lot without the gesso so just keep that in mind um, Oh, another option that I'm actually going to do a tutorial on with you is the color wheel. The color wheel helps me when I'm trying to decide what types of colors to use together on a painting because opposite colors on the color wheel are, um, are good to put together in a painting. So sometimes I use my color wheel and I really like it. It helps me decide like for mixing purposes and, and stuff like that. It shows me different, if I mix white in this color, if I start with a blue, violet, and I mix white in it, this is what color it's gonna be. You know, so it gives me a good idea of uh, different options for mixing colors. So I do use my color wheel pretty often. Um, this is another option, and this is for cleaning your brush. You can use soap and water. Soap and warm water will work fine, but this is um, an actual, it's called the Master's Brush Cleaner and Preserver, and it is especially prepared for paintbrush cleaning. So this is another option, and so, I think that's about it. If you have any questions, let me know. See y'all soon. Bye.